Okay, in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating introducing leash pressure to a dog. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we first have our communication channels. So we've worked our yes and we worked our free or whatever your markers are going to be, the condition reinforcers. Then what we want to do is we also want to make sure our dog understands the concept of luring. Luring is where we take the food and we guide our dogs into the position we want them to be in. Once we have all that in place, then we can start teaching our dog leash pressure. Now the way that we do this is first we apply the pressure. The dog is going to resist a little bit. After the pressure is applied, then we're going to introduce the food, lure the dog into the position, releasing the pressure after that, then delivering the reward. Now what this does <clears throat> is it shows our dog that the pressure will predict a reward. If you think about predictability when working with your dog, it can make everything much easier because what things predict end up equaling that value if it always predicts it. Meaning, if leash pressure always predicts food in the beginning and that's what the dog becomes accustomed to, then the pressure becomes something pleasant because it predicts the food. And the dog will end up beating us into the position because they understand it at that point so well. So it makes it much easier. All right, so I'm gonna be demonstrating with this sweet little dog I have right here. And again, pay attention to how I'm doing this. I'm gonna explain as I'm doing it, so you can see it shouldn't be really too stressful for the dog if you do this correctly, okay? So I'm gonna load up my pouches. And when doing this, I like to use a martingale. So all a martingale is, it's a flat nylon collar that has a chain on it. And what this does is it prevents a dog from slipping their head out. So it'll tighten up if they try to resist. And a lot of dogs will learn to do that turning motion to get their head out of the collar. So again, these martingales help prevent that from happening. All right, come up. I try to keep it very simple. First, I go to lift up, then I bring the food out. She sits, I release the pressure, and I give her the reward. For the down, I'm gonna bring my foot up nice and slow, apply pressure, then the food. Release the pressure, deliver the reward. Notice, I'm not using commands either. Leg comes up, pressure, then food. Yes, then reward. Pressure, yes. And I can use this for the bed as well. So I'm gonna do pressure, and good, she went right on it, so she's making it easy. Pressure back off, yes, then reward. Pressure goes up, pressure's turned off, then I reward. Foot comes up nice and slow. There's the pressure, then the food. Then we release the pressure. Leg comes up, pressure goes down, and there she goes, she's gonna do it on her own. Free. And then I'm gonna give her the food using my terminal marker. Now, what's important when you guys are doing this, anytime we're using negative reinforcement, that's what this is, so it's negative reinforcement. Out of the four quadrants, we have positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, negative punishment. Easy way to remember this, positive means adding, negative means taking away. Reinforcement is encouraging a behavior to be repeated. Punishment is trying to prevent that behavior from being repeated. So if I'm using positive reinforcement, I'm adding to the equation, I'm giving the dog a food, encouraging or trying to get the dog to do that behavior again. Negative reinforcement, taking something away. I turn pressure on when the dog complies, I turn it off. This would be the same as telling a young child, you can go outside and play, but you have to do your homework first. It's not a punishment, but it's showing the child you have to accomplish your homework, then you can go do what it is that you wanna do, establishing those good habits. Now, what's important when we're using negative reinforcement is, once the pressure is turned on, it cannot be turned off until the dog complies. Once the dog complies, the pressure must immediately be turned off. So this is very important when doing this. And again, this is just one more tool to add to our repertoire when it comes to communicating effectively with our dog. So I'm gonna do a little bit more with her. I'm gonna use a terminal marker. Also notice, I'm not saying 
the command because I don't want to have to reinforce the stay at this point. I'm only teaching the dog the concept of leash pressure. Follow the leash and you will be, <clears throat> follow the leash and you will be rewarded, okay? So I'm gonna do a little bit more. Come here, sweetie. So again, we lift up, free, and then I can reward. Lift up, free, and then reward. And I'm saying free when her butt hits the ground. Free, good. Free, very nice. So she's doing this one really well, and I'm gonna bring her back, and now I'm going to do the same thing again with the downward pressure. So again, foot comes up, pressure goes down, and she's starting to do it on her own, so I'm just gonna let her figure it out. Oh, almost had it. Free, good girl. We're gonna lift up, yes. Give her a reward. Foot comes up nice and slow. What I like is, I like the dog to get to the point where they lay down just when I start to bring the foot up. Very light pressure. She's thinking, you can see it, and free. Very nice. Again, we're gonna lift up, free, and reward. Lift up. Yes, I'm gonna use my yes on that one. Leg comes up, foot goes down, slow, steady pressure. Free, and then we're gonna reward. Again, we lift up, leg comes up, pressure goes down. Waiting for her to figure it out. If you need to, you can go back and help with the food. Free, good girl. You can even use this to teach fun little tricks like the spin. Again, lift up. Yes. Leg comes up. Pressure goes down, nice and slow. You can use your hand as well if you have a hard time balancing. So we're adding that pressure. there yet. I'm waiting for that elbow. Free. Good girl. Get her back on the climb. Free. Very nice. Free. Again, we're going to do the pressure. Slow and steady. Again, leg comes up nice and slow. There's that pressure. Free. Good. I can bring it back up with the pressure. time. Leg comes up. And I'll do this until I bring my leg up and the dog goes down on their own. Yes. So I'm going to reward her in place. Yes. Good girl. Sit. Now I'm going to bring her up. Yes. Good. 
Let's do another one. No. And bring her back into the sit. Good girl. Down. And I said the command, which I shouldn't have. Should not have said the command yet. But we all make mistakes. Free. Good girl. Bring her back up. Yes. Leg comes up. Pressure goes down. Yes. Good girl. Yes. Very nice. Good. Here we go. Again. So it's a good session. I'm gonna to wanna to do this a few more times with her. I wanna get it to the point where I go to lift my leg and she lays down because then that becomes the physical cue. And the main difference between using negative reinforcement in a combination with positive reinforcement is number one, it's much stronger. It's gonna get results way faster and it's way more clear to the dog what it is that you want. But what's also important is that if you're only using positive reinforcement, getting a dog to do a behavior for a reward, then the dog has the option whether or not they wanna do the behavior. So if the dog doesn't want the treat or doesn't want the toy, then they may not do the behavior that you're asking them to perform. So with negative reinforcement, it removes that. It lets them know it doesn't matter whether or not you wanna do the behavior, you have to do it. But once you do it, I'm gonna reward you for doing that behavior which ends up developing a way more confident and reliable dog within the obedience. So I hope this video is helpful and I'll see you guys on the next one.